Kia ora, folks. The chain rule is the last of our special derivative combinations that we are going to look at. The chain rule involves what's called composite functions or functions of functions, where a composite function means that you have one function and then it's actually composed of another function. Or you can break down the function and see that inside the first function you maybe have something else that you could call another function. So first of all, let's just look at some examples here. So f at x equals, and I have a few terms in a polynomial here, and then I have to the exponent 8 outside. Now you might want to expand this, but because it's to the power 8, that would be a nightmare. You'd have eight uh, sets of brackets with three terms in them. So recognizing here that actually you've just got something inside some brackets, all to the power 8, where the something in the brackets is your composite portion, and then your external or your outside function is the exponent 8. In the second one, I have the exponential function, so that's e to the power of x, but then it's not just x by itself. In the exponent, I have a trig function, which is sine of x. So I have a function e composed of a trig function. In my third example, I have a natural log function, and then it's not simply x by itself, like ln x. This is ln of, and then I say of, and we've got brackets, x squared plus 1. So that's a natural log function composed of a quadratic function. My last example here, I have an exponential function composed of 3x to the power 2, or composed of a quadratic function. Using the same examples, I'll go through this now and I'll say that one function is f at x and then it's composed of another function. You guessed it, let's call this one g of x. Now the f and the g, the order here is not important, but what is important is that you know which function is either inside or the composed of part or the internal part and which function is the outside part or the external part. So from my first example here, I can sort of circle this using a bubble and I can say, well, that's one function. I know how to differentiate that. And then my other function here is to the power eight. So I can use the power rule to differentiate that one. My next one, I have e as an exponential function, and then it's composed of, and then I have my trig function here, sine x. My natural log function, that's my first or my external function, and then it is composed of, go back to bubbles, it is composed of x squared plus 1. And if we're talking about internal and external, this natural log function actually wraps all the way around. Let's see if I can draw this better. That lawn wraps all the way around. Similarly, my e to the x wraps all the way around my sine x. So going in reverse here, I have my outside function that's an exponential and then I have my internal function, 3x squared. After identifying what our functions are, we need to know how to handle them. So what actually is the chain rule? So here I've got two functions. I've got e to the x and 2x. And if I'm going to compose one of the other, how I write this is f bracket and then g of x. Okay, a little bit of color coding here. So f of g of x means I'm going to write e raised to the 2x. So that's it. That's my function. It seems simple enough. e to the 2x. But this is no longer a standard derivative. And it's no longer a standard derivative, right, because I have a 2 times x in the exponent. And that's what's throwing me off, that extra little 2 sitting there in the exponent. So let's write out what the chain rule actually is. So if I want to know 
my derivative of f of g of x, and I'll just all use all one color here. Actually, maybe not. Let's try to color code this. So how I find this derivative? Well, I do f prime of the whole thing. And so in this case, it's g of x. And then what I do is I have an extra additional corrective term here. I need to multiply by the derivative of that other function, of that composite function. So I have f prime of the whole thing times just the derivative of, in this case, g of x. So just the derivative, in this case of green, would be just multiplied by 2. On the next slide, I've got the example laid out for us here. So find the derivative of e to the 2x. So I've got f prime of the whole thing. So that means derivative of e to the 2x multiplied by derivative. And now this is just of 2x. So this first derivative, it's an exponential function, it's just itself. So what am I doing? I'm writing down e to the 2x. But then I have a second derivative here. I have this corrective term, and this is now the derivative of 2x. So that's multiplied by 2. And all you can do to simplify this is write the 2 out front. So we get 2e to the 2x as my final derivative. Here's one we saw at the beginning. It's a giant sort of uh, polynomial here with to the exponent 5. And so my fifth power is going to be the bit in blue. And then my internal function is just going to be without the fifth power. So x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. So f prime at x, what does this equal? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to do the derivative of the blue. prime, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the green, also prime. So I'm intentionally using some sort of strange notation here to try to show you how to do these composite functions. So just the blue part, the blue part you could think of like this, imagine you've got a bucket and of course we don't know what's in the bucket because we can't see it and so we're just going to take the derivative without looking inside that bucket so for the blue part this is going to mean you take the five down in front and we're going to use the power rule i don't know what's in the bucket so i'm just going to write some brackets here just use my power rule subtract one And then for the green part, what you're actually doing is you're looking inside the bucket. So maybe I've got something green inside to try to finish this analogy. And now the derivative inside is going to be the derivative of this part. So I'll just fill in the numbers. What I've got here is I've got the power rule and I just rewrote what was inside that bucket. I just rewrote this down, even though I didn't know what to do with it. And then for my second step here, I'm actually applying the differential operator. So I will be finding the derivative in the second step. So I won't expand this because it's to the power five and I need to have dinner at some point today. So that just gets written down like it is. And now this derivative is just going to be individual terms using the power rule. So 3x squared minus 6x and the 4 differentiates to 0. And you might be tempted to expand it, but again, you might not. You only have limited time resources. So I would stop there. Find g prime of x. 
So my external function is going to be cosine, and my internal function is going to be 3x plus 2. And I will use the same color this whole time. So g prime of x. So I need the derivative of this cosine function. Don't worry about the angle. Don't worry about that argument. So the derivative of cos is negative sine. And then you just write down the same thing, whatever was in that bucket. 3x plus 2, that stays the same. And then our correction term, we want to multiply by the derivative of what was inside. So this is the derivative of 3x plus 2, which is actually just 3 by itself. And that's it. You could maybe bring the 3 out front, minus 3 times sine of 3x plus 2. But there it is. We are done. One note about these trig functions, I said don't worry about the, the angle. Anything inside the brackets here is the angle or the argument of the trig function. So I just wrote down those brackets. I just straight copied what was inside that angle, making sure I did the derivative of cosine and changed it to negative sine. And then afterwards, this is my chain rule term, just multiplied by 3. So sine of x cubed, this seems straightforward enough, except we're not too sure. x cubed means x times x times x. So that's 3x as an angle to a sine function. Uh, so let's just use the chain rule here. So g prime. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. Rewrite exactly what was inside the brackets before. And then the chain rule term is the derivative of the angle. So this is derivative of x cubed. So I took an extra step, but why not? That's OK. So this will be cosine x cubed. And then the derivative of x cubed is 3 x squared. Usually as convention, I'll write the trig function last, so I'll put that 3x squared up front, but there's no new information there. Both of those are fine. For natural log of sine x, we have here an external function. That's my natural log. And then we have sort of what's inside the bucket, my internal function, sine x. So y prime here will be the derivative of ln. So that's 1 over, right? Derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So this is 1 over, and it's the same thing. It's whatever was in my brackets. So 1 over sine x. And then the chain rule term here is the derivative of sine x which is cosine x. So this extra derivative is my chain rule term. And now we can simplify. So this is cos over sine. And you can leave it there, but you may also know that sine over cos is tangent. And so cos over sine is the inverse of tangent. And so this is called cotangent. So you may want to say that this is cot or cotangent of x, but you don't have to. That's OK. Let's go through some of the general forms just to practice our derivative notation and get used to manipulating the idea of this chain rule where you have different functions at work. So to start with, what do I have here? I have x to the power n. And then this is the general derivative using the power rule, right? So n came down in front, and then I subtracted 1. So that was the general form of the power rule. Um, e is itself. Ln differentiates to 1 over x, and so on. Sine goes to cos, and so on. So. Instead of having x to the power n, what if I have f of x or another function to the power n chain rule derivative? So how does this play out? 
So f of x to the power, well, I still need to use the chain rule, right? So n times f at x to the n minus 1. And then the chain rule term tells me what? What do I do next? So the chain rule term says come back and take the derivative of just what was inside the bucket. So that is my extra term. Let's write it in green. My chain rule term is f prime at x. So you can pause it here and go through and work out the rest. And I will also work out the rest. So the exponential function, it always differentiates to itself. So that's e to the f at x. But then I have a chain rule term here, and that says you take the derivative of whatever that exponent was. And so here I had a superscript, and this is now standard script. So the natural log function says you go 1 over x. In this case, it's f at x. And then my chain rule correction factor. And then my chain rule correction factor. And then my chain rule correction factor is f prime. So the derivative of sine goes to cosine. So in this case, it's cosine of f of x. And then my chain rule factor says f prime multiplied down the end. So we can see a trend here, right? All these chain rule extra terms here. So go ahead and work out the last two. So there we have it. That is the chain rule differentiating a function composed of another function.